Hello everyone. There are some people who depart this life not so bad as to be deemed unworthy of mercy, but not so good as to be admitted to the immediate happiness of heaven. Who said that? Actually, it was St. Augustine way back in the early centuries of the church. Eternal life is deferred until one has undergone a prior period of purification and penance. We should use this present world as an outpost of purgatory. Purgatorial pain is far more intense than anything to be experienced here on earth. Or so some of the saints tell us who we're also told were taken to purgatory and they saw what went off there. The pain is a temporary loss of God. These souls are much more aware than we are of the distance between the goodness and beauty of God for whom they suffer an ardent longing and their own imperfect state. They see now that there is a God and they realise more clearly how much they have hurt him, how many times they have disregarded him and how many opportunities they have wasted. Scripture tells us that nothing defiled can enter heaven. Closer our time now, in one of the Second Vatican Council documents, it reads, We accept with great devotion the venerable faith of our ancestors regarding this vital fellowship with our, heaven, with our brethren who are in heavenly glory, or who, having died, are still being purified. The Catechism, which was, came, was put together in 1983 under St. John Paul II. Now, the Catechism states that all who died in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified, are indeed assured of their eternal salvation. But after that, they undergo purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joys of heaven. The Church gives the name purgatory to the final purification of the elect, which is entirely different from the punishment of the damned. The Church formulated her doctrine of faith in purgatory, especially at the councils of Florence and Trent. Pope St. Gregory the Great teaches, as for certain lesser faults, we must believe that before the final judgment there is a purifying fire. He who is truth says, and this is also in scripture, that whoever utters blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will be pardoned neither in this age nor in the age to come. From this sentence we understand that certain offences can be forgiven even in the age to come. Now, I know our Protestant friends don't believe in purgatory. They say it's not in Scripture, but it certainly is in Scripture, and I've just shown where it is. This teaching is also based on the practice of prayer for the dead, already mentioned in sacred Scripture in the book of Maccabees, where it reads, it is a holy and wholesome thought to pray for the dead that they may be loosed from their sins. The holy souls, they're not unholy souls, they're holy souls. They are crying out for our prayers and the Mass is the most effective suffrage we can offer for them. St. John Chrysostom says that the Mass is the best way of bringing relief to the dead. The Catechism, already referred to, teaches From the beginning the Church has honoured the memory of the dead and offered prayers and suffrage for them, above all, the Eucharistic sacrifice of the Mass, so that thus purified they may attain the beatific vision of God, which is heaven. The Church also commends almsgiving, indulgences and works of penance undertaken on behalf of the dead. Purgatory is particularly relevant for those people who while on earth have not taken responsibility for their day-to-day -day sins and failings. 
we're not talking here about mortal sins, of course, but venial sins. Even though forgiveness is readily available by the merits of Christ's death and resurrection, those in purgatory have chosen to ignore this. In purgatory, we willingly endure its pains in order to make up for our sins. The holy souls, as they commonly called, purify themselves willingly and lovingly. St. Francis, I don't know whether that's St. Francis of Assisi or St. Francis Xavier, he says that the bitterest anguish experienced by the holy souls is shot through with a profound peace. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Thank you very much for listening and God bless you all.